Some good news uh, for a change as far as water restrictions are concerned. Three Gauteng metros, uh, the water restrictions have been lifted immediately. I'll name them for you, Johannesburg, Tswane and Ikuraleni. Well, let's find out uh, how we got to this very good point. Rand Water spokesperson, uh, it's Makanosi Maru, joining us uh, this morning. Makanosi, good to have you on ENCA. Uh, and finally, some good news. Uh, so tell us, how did we get the water restrictions lifted? What changed? Michael Norsen, let me stop you quickly. I suspect you might be on mute. Hit that unmute button for me. Let's try again. Morning. Can you hear me now? There we go. Good morning. Found the unmute button. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, just start over again. How do we get to this point? It's good news, obviously. Uh, what's changed? Good morning, Gareth. It is good news. Uh, we implemented stage two uh, restrictions. We did not get the results that we were hoping for. Then we moved to a second phase of a flow control management system where we took control in terms of what goes out of our reservoirs. And as a result, we, 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 our reservoirs have increased. The levels are above 60 percent. Now we, we are making the necessary changes. Uh, it's good news to have it above 60% uh, as well. Where should it be ideally? What is the, what's the golden number that Rand Water wants to get to? You mentioned 60%, but is that where we want to be or do we want to have more than that? We want to have more than that. 60% is a minimum. We want to be ideally at 80%. Mm. So our reservoir levels are between 60 and 80%. So we're still not yet out of the woods, but we are just saying to people, continue using water sparingly up until we fill up our reservoirs. Uh, so many people could be wondering if we're only at 60%, which is the bare minimum, why not keep the restrictions in place with all the rain we're getting? Uh, why not keep the restrictions in place until you get to 80%? Why lift them now? We, we are monitoring our reservoirs every, every three hours we get a report. So we are seeing that the reservoirs are, okay, they are going to just go high, high. Obviously, there is an increase obviously through a, a, a trend of about three, four days. So we made a decision that we are going to lift the restrictions, but we are still giving the responsibility and saying to municipalities, continue to monitor. And mm -hmm. if there are, there's an, a high consumption, then you can introduce uh, restrictions. So the responsibility lies with a particular municipality to ensure that the consumption is managed. Yeah, let's not, as residents, all start filling up our pools and washing cars three times a day, because uh, that does make a big difference. Uh, Michael Norsi, also just help me understand, we essentially got two different issues that we're discussing here. One was the reservoir levels, which you say is now coming up 60%, we want 80%, that's fine. The other issue, which was a problem for Randwater, was the continuous blackouts. That was causing an issue with pumping as well. How has that changed? Because we're still in blackout stage one at the moment. What's happening with the infrastructure support not being there because of the blackouts? We, we had discussions with ESCOM. Uh, obviously, you would know, I don't know if you're aware of it, uh, for, for our pump stations, uh, the primary and secondary pump stations, we are exempted from load shedding. So we do not get load shedding at all. But at our tertiary pump stations, we still do get uh, power cuts from time to time, but we do have generators in place. So at the moment, the, we are managing the situation. Uh, I see someone sending me uh, a question uh, on Twitter. Uh, Amanda Taupe uh, asking me to ask you, Maka Norsi, uh, right now, are, if people use water during peak times, are they still seeing an increased rate uh, for water usage? Or now that the restrictions are lifted completely, uh, there's no peak rate amount for using water? Are we, are we talking about the, the restrictions or are we talking about the cost? The cost. The, the cost. Yeah, I think, I think what she's asking is the cost. So if you use water now during the day, for example, what would be considered a peak time, if my understanding is right, are people paying more during peak times for water or is it still the same across the board all day, every day? Uh, my understanding is it's still the same throughout the day, but that obviously has, that lies, that responsibility lies with uh, municipalities. But my understanding is it's, mm. it's a flat rate throughout the day. All right, wonderful. Just final question as well. Uh, the 80% you spoke about earlier, uh, is there a timeline in place with your predictions? You say you check every three hours. Is there a timeline, possibly by end of November, going into December? Uh, springtime, summertime, th those are peak times for us. So we will be monitoring and communicating. Every two weeks, we do communicate. <laughs> it's like me asking you what's going to happen with the weather. An impossible question, uh, but I thought I'd try and ask anyway. Randwater spokesperson uh, Makanosi Maru joining us uh, today here on ENCS. So it is good news. Uh, it's a uh, stage...
uh, zero water shedding. That's right. There's no water shedding. There's no restrictions. The metros, uh, just to remind you as well, we're forced to implement those restrictions due to high uh, consumption. To remind you of uh, the metros again, Johannesburg, Swane and Ukurelen.